What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, me, that H-E-A-D, back with you for another episode of the podcast. And, uh, yeah. I don't know how long this is going to be, guys, but uh, I have some things to talk about. I have four things I want to talk about. It was three before I saw what happened today. I want, I've got four things I want to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about The Undertaker retiring from WWE. And the fiasco with Goldberg as well. We're also going to talk about the top 10 wrestlers that jump shipped from the promotion they were in to another promotion and regretted it. Also, we're going to talk about, yes, the 24-7 title. Now, I know I said I was going to talk about this the last time on the last podcast that I did. I was going to talk about it there and then, but I decided to end the podcast positive. Not negative, with all my garbage, with all the BS... And everything, I decided to end it positively. So, I'm going to get what I was going to say last podcast off my chest today. So, and also we're going to talk something that I found out today, which is uh, very, very familiar. And very, very interesting. And it's just a rumor, but it's a possible chance. It's a possibility that it might very well happen. You know, I don't do fake news or anything like that on this podcast. It may very well happen. And it seems that uh, Mr. Tony Khan from, from AEW has got a very interesting commentating team for, that he wants for AEW. It involves Jim Ross, and you're probably thinking his right-hand man is Jerry Lawler. No, it's not. I'll let you know during the duration of this podcast. But let's kick this off with The Undertaker. Okay? Undertaker. This guy, to be in all honesty, should be retired. And we all know what happened with the Goldberg and Undertaker match at Super Showdown, was it? Yes, Sh- Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. It was crazy. It was crazy. Because, in my opinion, even though the match turned into a clusterfuck, but... For the first duration of that match, that match was going great. You know, Goldberg stepped it up. I'm not going to get into the beef with him and Matt Riddle. Apparently, Matt Riddle and him have a little issue about uh, Matt Riddle and Goldberg. That's why Goldberg blocked him on Twitter. Apparently, Matt, Ish, Matt Riddle doesn't like the fact that Goldberg is portraying this MMA character that he's not. So, I don't know. That's for another day, I suppose. But the, the match was going great, at least I thought, up until the point where Goldberg smacked his head on the turnbuckle. Which he got legitimately concussed from, by the way. And apparently these two had an argument backstage, whatever, whatever. You know. But that was the intriguing part, because apparently after that, I think it was the next day, it was it came out that The Undertaker, somebody wrote a comment on, I believe it was Instagram, that The Undertaker should, WWE should just let The Undertaker retire. Undertaker himself liked that. Whether it was on the Instagram, on Twitter, I believe it was Instagram. The Undertaker liked that comment. So even The Undertaker is agreeing that he should retire from WWE. You know, even he wants to be done with wrestling. And to be honest with you, I don't blame him. I think we all can agree, ladies and gentlemen, that it should be saying, bye bye, Undertaker. It's time for the Undertaker to pack it in. You know, we all got this, sti- you know, we've all had this thing with the sting and everything like that, and sting opportunity and everything. It's time to say goodbye to the Undertaker. It really is. Now, I love me some Undertaker, but they should have let him retire. To be honest with you, they should have let him retire when he lost to Roman at WrestleMania. Because that's the night they should have turned Roman heel. Because he came out on Raw the next night after beating The Undertaker at WrestleMania and legitimately got booed right out of the building. This is my yard now. The chorus of booze was definite. That's when it should have ended right there and then. He walked out, dropped his gear in the uh, middle of the ring, walked down, that was it. 
That's where it should have ended. But no, WWE have to bring him back, don't they? Undertaker should retire. End of. And when you've got him agreeing with a comment on friggin' social media that WWE should allow him to retire, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, speaks for itself. But Undertaker should just go. I don't know what we're gonna plan. I don't know what WWE is gonna try and do with him next. Hopefully nothing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I really truly have a feeling that there's gonna be another Undertaker Goldberg match. I hope there isn't. But I truly have a feeling that the Undertaker and Goldberg are gonna have a rematch. I really do. I really do. When it will be, I don't know. But I truly believe that the Undertaker and Goldberg are gonna have a rematch. Like I say, it's just a case of when it's going to happen. Because I really don't know, but... I just have that feeling, that sneaky feeling that that, that it's going to happen. Will it happen? We'll wait and see. But yes, I agree. Everybody else would probably watching this podcast should, would have probably agree as well. It's time for The Undertaker to say goodbye. Yeah, it's time for The Undertaker to go bye-bye. If I'm being honest. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on. That's all I wanted to say about that. We move on to the WWE 24-7 title. The biggest joke in WWE, it really is. And I've said this many, many times on this podcast. That it's the biggest joke in WWE. Now, I didn't say what I was going to say last episode because I wanted to end that on the positive note. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'll get to all that in a second about that last episode. The WWE 24-7 title is a complete joke. And it was defended at the Saudi show. It didn't come out on the Saudi show. Thank the Lord. You know, we didn't we didn't watch the Saudi show and then see figured our ah, truth come running down the fucking aisle or coming out the crowd and everything just to get away from wrestlers. We didn't see that. Thank thank the Lord. But apparently Ron Truth was on that trip to the Saudi show. Because it showed on social media that he took a phone call while they were on the break, because they had a long travel. It was a long travel on a plane to Saudi Arabia for the show, so the, the Super Showdown show. And while he was taking a phone call, he took a break, he took a phone call. While he was taking a phone call, Jinder Mahal comes running up from behind with a referee, pins him, and takes the championship, the 24-7 title, and goes and runs in the frigging toilet and stays in the damn toilet for God knows how long. Right? And then everybody's asleep, and then Jinder pops out, and he's like, okay, everybody's asleep now. I'll go and get some sleep too. And then particularly buries himself in his cover, in his seat. And the next minute, you've got our truth with a referee looking for the guy. And then he eventually pulls the cover back, sees it's him. <sighs> and this is when it got fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, but this is when it got really, really stupid. Sees him... In his seat, lying down, asleep, Carl Anderson is right next to him, for c c crying out loud. And he's like sitting there. Ron Killens, tr the truth, jumps on freaking Jinder Mahal for Pete's sake. While he's asleep, Mahal can't move or kick out. Referee's even counting him. He's going one, two, three... I'm sitting there thinking, are you fucking kidding me? Is this what's come to now? And then Jim Mahal says, you can't do that. You can't do that. He takes the 24-7 rule and yada, 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 yada. And then Ron Kill and then Truth come, gets up, Ron Killens, gets up. He says, yes, I got my 24-7 European title back. I'm like, what the f***? The 24-7 European title. 24-7 European title. 
And then as he says that, everybody is in there. No Way Jose, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Sin Cara. Everybody wakes up and proceeds to chase him through the fucking airplane. And apparently the airplane had a, had a flaw. So there was like two flaws on the airplane. He runs up the stairs, legs it straight to the toilet. You've got these wrestlers following him. Even the friggin' hostess was like going, uh, what's going on here? What's going on? She didn't have a fucking clue. Unless she was an acting, I don't know. But she didn't have a clue. Oh, my God. It's the PG hardcore title. I've said it. But the thing is with this, if you're going to have this 24-7 title... At least have some matches with it. I was watching the Hardcore title the other day. The differences between the Hardcore Championship back in the day and this piece of shit right now is there hasn't been any matches with it. Nobody's put a match on the line, like say a one-on-one -on -one match or triple threat or four-way. It's been basically being chased around by these wrestlers Wrestlers chasing wrestlers just to get a championship. It's fucking stupid. At least have a match with it. A one-on-one -on -one match. I was what like I say, I was watching the hardcore title back the other day. Some of the hardcore title memories. Yes, that was a 24-7 ruling. Watching Dean Malenko attack Crash Holly in a fucking kids' playground, for Christ's sake, on a SmackDown show. You know, them two wrestling inside a bouncy castle, for Christ's sake. You know, but they had matches. They had legitimately one-on-one -on -one matches that you can have on pay-per-view. And then after the match, you get everybody out 24-7 ruling. But this thing is 100%. It's ridiculous. And like I say, and I stand by it right now, it's going to ruin pay-per-views. It's legitimately going to ruin pay-per-views. Because before long, whether it's going to start at Stomping Ground, June 23rd, I don't know. But before long, you're going to sit there on the network and watch these pay-per-views. No matter what it is, whether it's WrestleMania, Stomping Ground, whatever it is after Stomping Ground, and then SummerSlam or whatever. You're going to watch these pay-per-views, and halfway through the show, you're going to see, or maybe halfway through a match, you're going to see our truth or whoever the champion is, legging it through the damn ring. And it's going to disrupt matches. I bet you. I'll put all my money on it. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. But it's going to happen. It's legitimately ridiculous. But like I say, if you're going to have this 24-7 title, at least have a match. You've got the Intercontinental Belt on SmackDown, the WWE title, the tag titles, and the women's title. You get matches out with that. You've got the 24-7 title, which is apparently on all shows. I've never seen it on NXT UK. I've never seen it on NXT. I've never seen it on 205. I don't even watch 205, quite frankly. Right? But apparently it's on all shows. You, on Raw, you've got Universal, Tag Team, Women's, and the US. It's going to disrupt matches. It's going to be ridiculous. Not many people like it. I've seen a lot of these numpties on friggin' YouTube and people like that. Oh, it's the funniest thing on TV. It's very entertaining. and Both fucking shit it is. It's fucking ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And like I say, if you're going to have the title, at least have some matches with it. At least have Hard Truth defend it at a pay-per-view or something. You know, or maybe on Raw, one-on-one -on -one match with, you know, I'd love him face Jinder Mahal. You know, having face Jinder Mahal, for Christ's sake. The whole thing is just fucking ludicrously stupid. How people find this entertaining. It, it, it's mind-blowing. It really is mind-blowing. How people find this really entertaining. Because I don't. I truly don't. I mean, the whole thing was fucking stupid to begin with. You know, we're all building up for this whole fucking new title coming out and everything. And then Foley comes out and puts that in. Foley had to have that look on his face or thought in his mind was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Legit. What the hell am I doing? You know, even people were taking the piss out of it. Cody was taking the piss. Every, what? The whole 24-7 title is a fucking joke.
period. End of. Okay? There's not a single person that's going to be watching this right now, whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or even Twitch, that's going to say or, or convince me that this title is entertaining. Because it's not. It's making all the wrestlers look stupid. You know, chasing freaking other wrestlers who've got the belt, like something out of Benny Hill or something like that. It's ridiculous. You know? What is the point of it? Titles are meant to be run in the ring. This title is meant to be, you know, yes, it's a 24-7 title. But at least with the hardcore title, they had matches. There hasn't been one single match out of this title. It's just basically been a title where people win it anywhere and then have people freak about a portion of the wrestlers chase this other wrestler who has the belt. It's like something out of a Betty Hill comedian show or something like that. You know, de 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 I'm sorry, but that is the worst thing in WWE at the moment. Besides this whole, you know, friggin' um, wild card rule, the wild card card rule, which is ludicrously stupid. You know, if you're gonna have, the, if you're gonna split the brands up and have them back together again and not do the brand split anymore, then fucking do it. This wild card rule is just fucking stupid. It's ruining the main roster. It really is ruining the main roster. You know, and in my opinion right now, the 24-7 title is ruining the main roster. So that's two things that's ruining the main roster. God almighty, man. The whole, I mean, the whole thing is just logically stupid. It really is. It's like... I would have loved to have seen Foley's face when he was like told that he was going to announce that title. I would love to have seen his face. Because he had to have thought. Really? What the fuck? You know? He'd had to have thought that. He couldn't. There was no way. You're not telling me a three-time WWE champion, best-selling book author, and a bona fide WWE Hall of Fame famer. You can't tell me that he was on board with that. No chance. No chance. No way was he on board with that. No way in any way, shape, or form did that legend think that was a good idea? I'm not having anybody in the comments or any of you watching this right now saying that he did. No. And you, and if he did, you have to show me proof. Convincing proof. Because I'll wait. It ain't going to happen. You know. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time WWE had made a complete idiot out of him. And I, I would imagine they did it on that day as well. I mean, Jesus Christ. To be honest with you, if that was happening, if I was in Foley shoes at that time, I would have put my head down the damn toilet. <laughs> I never showed my face in public again. Oh yeah, great, yeah. Nice title and then, then it's come out with the 24-7 title. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I thought the old tag team belts, remember them bronze tag team titles? Them bronze belts that they had, the circle belts with the bronze on it? I thought they were ugly. All of a sudden, they're not the worst titles that have ever been existing in WWE. Anyway. Good grief. But that's my thoughts on the 24-7 title. And that's what I was going to say last episode. But I decided to end it on a high, so I thought I'd get it off my chest today. Like I say, it's ludically fucking stupid. End of discussion. Right. Let me have a look at this. Because we're going to have now the 10 wrestlers who jump ship from their companies that we're in to another company and regretted it. And there's been a few, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to lie, there's actually been a few that have regretted it.
There's actually been a few that I've regretted it. And it's courtesy of the Wrestling Hub on YouTube. Now, this is just my opinions, his opinions as well. Might not be true, you know, but when you see the, and hear the list, you probably tend to agree. Because a lot of wrestlers nowadays, they jump ship or want to jump ship to other companies. Mostly from WWE, because WWE is a pile of, a pile of dicks. And they want to go greater pastures and try and reinvent themselves and everything, i.e. Chris Jericho. Sometimes it doesn't always work out for them. I mean, Moxley's the happiest he's ever been since leaving WWE. And hell, he's the US champion now in IWGP. And apparently he's going to be facing Naito in the G1 Climax, from what I've seen. But there's a lot of wrestlers that went to WWE, thought it was the be-all, end-all, and regretted it. And hell, it's not just WWE, it's other companies as well. They've regretted going to other companies from the companies that were in at the time, i.e. from ECW to WCW, and have totally regretted it. Right, we kick this off. Number 10, Mike Awesome. Who apparently, I found out watching this video, is a distant relative of Hulk Hogan. He left ECW when he was the world champion, mind you, and went to WCW. But apparently from watching this video, the reason why he left ECW to go to WCW is because Paul Heyman couldn't pay him his wages. So he thought he was in his rights to go to WCW. Boy, oh boy, did he regret it. Because apparently he, he made an impact, came out on Monday Nitro, Came out on Nitro, attacked Kevin Nash in the ring, made an impact, and he attacked Kevin Nash while he was still the ECW heavyweight champion. But apparently, from what I got, he was a distant relative of Hulk Hogan, or something like that, I don't know. But apparently, Vince Russo did not take too kindly to him, because Vince Russo, who was beefing with Hogan at the time, creatively, Decides to put him in a gimmick, that 70s guy, and have him come out to 70s gear and, and everything like that. Just made him look completely stupid. <laughs> so he went from the killer Mike Awesome, the gladiator Mike Awesome, to that 70s guy, and you wonder why he regretted it, according to this chat. And to be honest with you, I don't blame him. Public Enemy, number nine, was Public Enemy, and they went from ECW to WWE. And apparently when they went from ECW to WCW first, then they went back to ECW, and then they had the opportunity to go to WWE. Boy, did they regret it. Because they went, and they, apparently they went with a chip on their shoulders, because they went the one titles in ECW, the one titles in WCW too. But apparently they went to WWE with a huge cocky attitude and a cocky chip on their shoulders. And then people got sick of it. WWE got sick of it. And they tried and tried and tried. And they got to the point where they just fed him to the acolytes. And apparently there was a beef with um, Terry Taylor who was working in WWE at the time. And the acolytes, I believe it was on Sunday Night Heat, went out... I had a match with them and legitimately beat the living shit out of them. And then after that, they were fired. Public enemy, that is. They were fired and let go. Because they had a cocky attitude and everything. And apparently that beatdown that the Acolytes gave, they give exactly the same to... It was called the Acolytes beating test. It, it was called a test or something. And... The Acolytes gave exactly the same stuff what they did to Public Enemy to the Dudley Boys, but the Dudley Boys passed the test. Public Enemy didn't, unfortunately. Number eight, another one from ECW to WWE, Shane Douglas. Now, this was all in his key. Do you know what I'll do, guys? I'll put a video in the description below of an interview about Shane Douglas and his time in WWE and how he left WWE to go back to ECW. I'll put it in the description below. It's very fascinating. But yes, 
he was going through some problems with ECW, and eventually he ended up leaving to go to WWE. I think he was going to go there assuming that it was going to be Shane Douglas. But WWE put him in this character, this Dean Douglas gimmick. They used his background because he was a legitimate, he was a teacher. His background was a teacher. So the, and he, so WWE used that, char, that persona, if you will, to create a character called Dean Douglas. who was a teacher with all the scratching of the claw, scratching of the board and shit like that. And it didn't work. And plus, he had some heat with the click as well, because the click made him made an idiot out of him, according to this. And, you know, even 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 he himself, you know, in various shoot interviews, has been very vocal about the click and what they were like back then. You know, Kevin, Sean, and that as well. But like I say, guys, if you want to know the main reason why he left... I'll drop the video in the description below whether you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, or even Twitch as well. I'll drop it in the description below. It'll be there. It'll be the Shane Douglas interview on how he left WWE because apparently he had a falling out with Vince. Besides the whole click thing, but he had a falling out with Vince as well because he, was, he got injured. And Vince wanted him to work but the doctor turned around and said to him that he couldn't work because if he made one false move in the ring he would be paralyzed for life and vince didn't take too kindly to that i'll let shane explain just watch the video i'll put the video in the description below and you can see for yourself but yes and also during this turn this uh reign he had a uh, short reign as the intercontinental champion because he won the intercontinental title by forfeit Okay, he won the Intercontinental Championship by forfeit because Sean basically had to forfeit the title. But lost it 20 minutes later to Riz Ramon. Enough said, really. Number seven, Pac. Dragon Gate to WWE. Now, I don't agree with this one. I don't think uh, Pac really, really... Um, regretted going to WWE it just it fell apart for him at the end I believe if he'd have stayed in NXT he'd have been fine no doubt about it he'd have been fine but they put him on the main roster and made him the cruiserweight champion made him the face of the brand and then it all went downhill from there basically because Pac believed he should have been on the main roster and Pac believed he should have been a main roster guy not a cruiserweight guy you know, he should have been top of the league, top of the pie, if you will. But WWE did not agree with him on that. And that's why it all fell apart from there. I believe if he'd have stayed in, in NXT, looking back on it, in retrospect, if he'd have stayed in NXT, he'd have been fine. Because he got used in NXT. Because he was a main guy in NXT. He was the champion. You know, that's what he probably should have believed he was or would have been on the main roster. You know, maybe a top, not the cruiserweight champion, but maybe a, going for a WWE title. And at one point, he even came close to winning the WWE championship. But maybe he should have went for the WWE title, you know, universal title, whatever. But he, apparently management didn't believe that. That's where it all fell apart. So he ended up leaving eventually and going back to Dragon Gate. And he's working all over the world. He was in Defiant. He nearly won their world title in Defiant. I saw the episode. And to be honest with you, he got robbed. But uh, the Dragon Gate belt... I mean, that's why he didn't go to any AEW. That's why they had to cancel the match. And he had the match early with, um, with him and Hangman Page. It was supposed to be him and Hangman Page one-on-one -on -one at the uh, Double or Nothing show. But they had to have it early. Because apparently... Dragon Gate... Him having that Dragon Gate belt... He didn't want to lose the match, even though the, he was going to win it eventually, because they were building, they wanted to build to a match with him and uh, Kenny Omega. But apparently, he didn't want to lose the match with Hangman Page in any way, shape, or form, because he had the Dragon Gate title and he was a Dragon Gate champion, and Dragon Gate didn't have any plans to take the belt off him anyway. 
and he thought it would be disrespectful to the company that, you know, being their champion and everything, and he's losing on another brand. I thought it would be disrespectful to the company that basically put him on the map in the wrestling world. But it's fair enough, but it is what it is. Next, Loki, Ring of Honor to WWE. If there's ever a guy that deserved something in WWE, it was this man. You know, this guy was a color, the inaugural Ring of Honor World Champion. And he's still kicking butt today in MLW, Major League Wrestling. But everybody thought, and everybody was great. You know, It was going to be a tremendous thing to see Loki the killer. Loki, you know, getting his break and getting his getting what he deserves in WWE, going there and kicking ass and getting over and being the champion and whatever, whatever. Didn't turn out that way, did it? Because A, he got repackaged as Caval. B, he had Michelle McCool and Layla as his manager. And C, he got put on the season two NXT show. And he actually won it. The season two uh, NXT show. This was before NXT became a official wrestling brand. This was back when NXT was a game show you'd probably see on the network on the Saturday night. Basically, WWE made a fool out of him. He was unused, underused, and he wasn't the killer that we all saw on the indie circuit. They just repackaged him and made him a complete idiot. And even he ended up saying that he wasn't going to get anywhere in WWE. You know, big deal. He won the NXT show. whoop de fucking do He wasn't getting anything out of it. Out of it. So even Loki was smart enough to think, you're not going to use me properly. You're not going to do anything with me. See ya. He was out of there. And thankfully, he, he managed. To be honest with you, I think doing that, he managed to save his career. Because if he stayed there any longer, his career would have been over. Done. Speaking of career being over, WCW to WWE, which was uh, Vader. Boy, did this guy regret this. And even Jim Cornette even said this as well. This guy, I remember watching WCW back in the day. The early years. Well before Bischoff got out of it. This guy was a monster. A monster heel. Um, a monster heel. Big monster, very intimidating, former WCW world champion and a US champion too, I might add. I believe he was a US champion, but he was a world champion. Monster heel, badass, you know, a guy you wouldn't want to step in the ring with because he just beat the piss out of you, uh, kind of heel. And he had great matches with Sting and people like that, and even matches with Ron Simmons as well and it was actually Ron Simmons who beat him for the championship to become the first black guy to be the world champion you know his run in that time was tremendous and then everybody thought okay he's got the WWE he's going to do the same in WWE WWE repackaged him you know he was called Big Van Vader the item called WWE called him the man they call Vader. And he went from being this badass, tremendous heel in WCW to being a joke. And WWE made a complete joke out of him, to be honest with you. They turned him soft, basically. And I think... I don't know. I, Jim Cornette even said this as well. They didn't want to call him Vader at one point. They wanted to call him something else. Um, they just made an idiot out of him. And he was... He, he ultimately regretted it. If he'd have went to WWE and been the guy he was in WCW, the monster heel and everything, the badass, he'd have been fine. But they didn't do that with him, did they? They turned him... Basically, WWE turned him soft. And it was a huge mistake on their part. Huge mistake. Oh boy. Austin Aries is the next one at number four. Austin Aries, TNA to WWE. I want to talk about somebody who regretted it. Everybody thought in 2016 when he came in, he joined NXT. Had a feud with Baron Corbin. Everybody thought 
okay, this guy's going to do something. He's going to do some great things in WWE. He was the world champion in TNA. This guy could be a big player in WWE. Came in, went on to the main roster, got injured, an eye injury, to put him in the uh, commentator's booth, which was great. At least I did something with him. And then he had the opportunity to come back and wrestle again. This big, huge comeback. And everybody thought this was the guy that was going to dethrone Neville, who was the champion, Pac. He was a cruiserweight champion. He wasn't really getting anywhere at that particular time, but they eventually led him back in to wrestle. And, I hoped, and everybody thought that he was going to dethrone Neville. You know, oh, he's going to dethrone Neville. Neville's going to be defeated by him and it's going to be Austin Aries who's going, going to take the torch and Austin Aries is going to carry the, the 205 brand nah that wasn't the case was it because he had, he had a match with Neville on the pre-show and lost of Wrestlemania and to rub it all in they took his royalties away because apparently on the Wrestlemania DVD they took the match off the match is not on the DVD so the royalties that Austin Aries was meant to get with that match didn't come through because they took it off the DVD. I walked out, if that was me. I don't blame him for doing it. I legitimately don't blame him for doing that, if that's the case. But yeah, how that match was not on the freaking main roster, the, the, the main card, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, number three, Kenta Noah to WWE. Now he's in New Japan, by the way, because he's actually left WWE. But yes, he came in as a Deo Itami. He was doing good things. But I think what made this guy regret, because I don't know, I don't know if he regretted going to WWE. I'd, I'd, you'd probably have to talk to the man himself on that one. This is just this guy assuming that he regretted going to WWE. But his downfall was his injuries. That was his downfall in WWE, the injuries. Because he got injured and then it's like no one cared about him. Kind of deal, you know. And then he got put on 205 Live. You know, he wasn't getting anything out of it. And obviously, if you get injured, the, the, you know, and stay out for the longer length and everything, WWE are, gonna not, are not going to look twice at you. They're going to think some things and everything like that. So, you know, it is what it is. So, I think it was just it was just unlucky with uh, Hideo for me. That's all. That's that's all that was. Just a bit. It was just unlo unlucky, unlucky stuff for him. But, you know, it is what it is. Number two, Chris Jericho, ECW to WCW. This was 50-50 for me. Because many of you people probably thinking, oh, wait a minute. Jericho, ECW, WCW? Yes. Jericho's first title in America was the ECW World Television Champion. Chip. He's a former ECW TV champion. Also former WCW World T TV champion too. But, uh, yeah, he was doing good in, in, in ECW, but like the others, like the Malencos, the Guerreros, and people like that, they ended up going to WCW for greater pastures. And he went to WCW... I don't know if he regretted it going to WCW, but he was the face of the cruiserweight division. He was having these kick-ass matches and everything, and he wanted to have matches with the main roster cards and everything, but there was like legitimate heat between him and Goldberg at the time, and Goldberg wouldn't look twice at him. Goldberg wouldn't look twice at him. You couldn't get them matches because Goldberg wouldn't look wrestle him. And he was just completely frustrated. That's why on one nitro he had a temper tantrum when he was smacking the, you know, when he was smacking the, the uh, ring post with a, with a chair, shouting, "I'm sick of this." You know, that's how that, how that came about. 
could he have held out in ECW to wait to go to the WWE instead of going to WCW? Who knows? I don't know. But he ended up going to WCW. And then in 1999, he left WCW and joined WWE. And, w and WWE took advantage, didn't they? Because they made him a huge star. And he became a huge star in WWE. He became the star that he knew he could be. And that WCW obviously didn't see him being that. I would imagine ECW saw that in him. I would imagine ECW saw that in him. Pity WCW couldn't see it. And at the time, I think it was just wrong place, wrong time for uh, for WCW at that particular point in time, in my opinion. You know, because obviously, let's face it, he couldn't get over in WCW. Rey Mysterio couldn't get over in WCW. Other people like that couldn't get it. Other wrestlers in WCW couldn't get over. Not with Hogan and the NWO and people like that in there. And speaking of somebody who couldn't get over in WCW, number one, Bret Hart. Now, let me just re let me just watch this little bit here. You're gonna hear this in the background, guys. So I apologize. All right. Bret I want to talk about somebody who had no choice. The greatest technical great. wrestler that pro wrestling ever saw. The son of the legendary Stu Hart, Bret was just one of many graduates you know, to come out of the Hart family dungeon. Just the greatest wrestler, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Including the British Bulldog, Chris Benoit, and more. Bret went to WCW after his contract with the WWE expired. And his contract to WWE expired, even though he signed a contract beforehand. You know, he legitimately signed a contract, um, you know, beforehand. Legitimately signing that contract because WWE couldn't pay him apparently. If you watch the Wrestling with Shadows documentary, Vince McMahon wanted him to go to the world. Apparently, went to his house and probably begged him to stay, and then realized he couldn't pay him. Would turn him up his ass. As it led to the infamous Montreal screw job. Brett may have been screwed by WWE, but his time in WCW you know, wasn't. And him leaving. Wasn't because of the Montreal school drop, him leaving because he didn't want to drop the title to Sean in in uh, Montreal. So WWE had no choice but to take the belt off him the way they did and make that screw drop. And he went to WCW, and even he's admitted himself. He, even he said this himself that he's regretted going to WCW to begin with. Because, obviously, he didn't go because, you know, he wasn't regretting the money. They were paying him well. I believe it was the back end of November of 1997 was Survivor Series. He left the next night. That was him done. Survivor Series was his last show in WWE. Done. The poor bastard didn't even get on the fucking Nitro until, say, a couple of weeks before Starcade. So basically, it was like one month later, he's on Nitro. Even though he left WWE the night after Survivor Series, one month later, he's on Nitro. You know? You know, that's a bad start to begin with. And then, having, and then above all else, they have him come in to fucking WWE. They have him come into WCW and they have him referee a match. Um, Sabisco and Eric Bischoff at Starcade for control of Nitro. <laughs> the biggest star in the company in WWE feeding off that, you know, that anger. And WCW didn't have a clue what to do with him. Yes, he had great matches eventually after Starcade going into. 98. He had matches with um, Kurt Henning. You know, old school matches with Kurt Henning. You know, even a match with Ric Flair sold out of 98. You know? WCW did not know what to do with him. It wasn't until, say, 1999, towards the end of 1999, he became world champion. He became heavyweight champion of the world, and hell, he even became tag team champions with. Goldberg, and then that was it. 
Goldberg pretty much ended his career at Stark in 99. You know? Need I say more? So, I can understand that being number one on the, on the list. Because let's face it, WWE didn't have a Scooby-Doo what to do, uh, WCW rather, didn't have a Scooby-Doo to do what to do with Bret Hart. And I'm sorry, if he's left after the, after the pay-per-view, and then the next night he's, he's not in WWE anymore, and he's had the chance to go to the Nitro, Jeff Jarrett left WWE after No Mercy. 99 and on. The next night he's on Nitro. Sticking a guitar over friggin' Buff Bagwell's head. It took Brett nearly one month to get on the friggin' Nitro. To get into WCW on TV. Why? Because WCW didn't have a clue what to do with him. So what did they do? Oh, we're bigger men, we'll have a referee this match. Biggest star in the WWE comes in and his first thing he does in WCW is referee in a match. Give me a break. I'd have been, you know, WCW would have been ashamed of themselves for that. One of the greatest talents in w WWE's roster, or to ever grace the ring, gets made like that. And he's even said it himself. He didn't care. He, he's basically called Bischoff an idiot and that. But he's even said it himself. He didn't care about the money. He didn't care about the money. He was getting paid very, very well. But WCW made him look like an idiot. But anyway, that's the end of that top ten. That was my opinions on that. Uh, ten wrestlers that WWE... Uh, uh, ten wrestlers that jumped ship from the companies and regret them. So, Wrestling Hub on YouTube, if you want to see that video for, for yourself. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to end this podcast with some... some uh, AEW news. Apparently, Randy Orton has been offered a champion a contract by WWE and has turned it down. His contract expires in, I believe, his contract expires to begin the twenty twenty. Many people believe that he's holding out to go to, w to AEW. Could we see the Viper in AEW? Be a hell of a figured name to get. But uh, yeah, it seems that way. From what I've been hearing and reading, it seems that Randy Orton is holding out to end his um, career. It's Tanya with WWE. He's not going to sign a contract. And he's going to go to AEW. You know, Mike Bennett and Maria Canellis have signed contracts to stay in WWE. But apparently Orton's not going to do that, it seems. From what it seems, things might change, things might change, but it seems WWE might have to pull out all the stops to keep their number one guy. And apparently, the, the, the contract that he was offered was seven figures. It was a seven figure contract. So it was pretty much double what he was making, what he's making already. They upped the ante a little bit on the pay, like a pay rise. So. It seems that way as well. Now, I said at the beginning of the podcast that AEW are looking to bring in somebody to be the commentator for, uh, to, you know, to, to, to go with Jim Ross. It seems that way. I don't know, but it seems that way. And many of you people probably think, oh, it's Jerry Lawler. No, it's not. The guy who's going to bring him, who, who they want to bring in to be the uh, commentator with Jim Ross. Because we all know Jim Ross is the commentator of AEW and he's going to be the, the main guy in AEW. You know, the lead announcer. There's no doubt about that. Despite, besides all the back roll stuff he's going to do as well, he's the lead announcer in, the, in AEW. End of. Right. The right-hand man they want... Or the one to get for him, if you can believe this, is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes, you heard me correct. Now, this has obviously started um, with the fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, The Stone Cold Steve Austin Show, is coming back later this month, as of this recording. It is now June 17th. Um, and it's obviously coming back later this month because one of the hosts, one of the guests that he's gotten there... 
is Tony Khan, AEW. And apparently, Vince McMahon is pissed. He's not happy with it. Because even, he's not happy with Orton, but he's definitely not happy with one of his top guys and his legendary guys that made him a lot of money and drew him a lot of money. He's going to go, or even would think, would sign with another company. There's a possibility he might. Because Austin's admitted to himself that he's done with WWE, he's done with wrestling. It's all of it. Done. Good night. You know, even, he, even he's smart enough to realize he's retired. Done. Just one problem, though. WWE want him to come back for one more match in the Saudi show. They want him to wrestle in the Saudi show. Yeah. And I, and I don't think Austin wants to do that. But I don't blame him, considering what's happened with Undertaker and freaking Goldberg and people like that. It's interesting. Stone Cold Steve Austin as a commentator. Or as a possible commentator. I mean, he's got the perfect guy to do it. I mean, Austin's best friend in the business and the entire wrestling business in general. You know, so it, it's 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 genuinely the perfect guy to do it. There's no question about that. Which is uh, Jim Ross. So I could I could I could definitely understand that. But Austin in AEW, or possibly in AEW, being the announcer, people watching him on ITV because yes, AEW is coming to ITV in the in the fall this year. It'd be intriguing. And it'd be a lot different to seeing uh, Jim Ross with... Like, you know, everybody's probably used to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. But uh, it'd be a fresh look. You know, the two best friends as a commentators. I wouldn't mind seeing it. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Question is, will it happen? Apparently negotiations have got an ongoing... Obviously, with the whole host, you know, Austin being, um, Tony Khan being on Austin's podcast and everything. So, obviously, the negotiations are going to be ongoing. Nothing's been agreed yet or offered or whatever. But it'd be very different to see. And this, if this doesn't prove that AEW is a legitimate um, competition for WWE, then nothing does. You know, I took AEW seriously. You know, it, and obviously WWE are taking them seriously because the talent they're trying to get and everything, it's, you know, they're definitely, like I've said before, they're definitely competing with talent. How it's going to turn out, we won't know until October when the, when the uh, TV show comes up. You know, yes, they're doing pay-per-views. Yes, they're doing great matches. You know, they've got very Moxley versus, you know, they've got Moxley versus um, Kenny Omega August 31st. You know, them kind of matches. So they're competing with them in that way. In, pr in presentation and product. Are they going to be like a gentleman competition? We won't know until October. Or the fall when the uh, TV show eventually comes out. But I'm looking forward to it. And can you imagine seeing on TNT? Jim Ross. Color commentator. Stone Cold Steve Austin. In AEW. That'll be. It's a hell of a parent. And it's. Uh, it kind of gives you something to think about. Doesn't it? But anyway ladies and gentlemen. That wraps it up for me. Here on this podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Wherever you are watching this. Or listening to this. Or hearing this. Or whatever it is you are doing. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. YouTube.com forward slash the Wrestling Madness channel. Facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast and Twitch.tv forward slash Anthony Walker Games Matter. And soon to be on my website too, once I get that thing in. I've got the information. I think I butchered the uh, phone call a little bit because I forgot the details that I was given for the phone call. So, like I said, it'll be on the part, it'll be on the website as well very, very soon. So, until then, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Wrestling matters to me. I hope it matters to you. I am done. Thank you and good night.